Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Prosec's new Die 2 pull-off tester. This is an evolution of the previous Dyna pull-off tester, where they have removed the mechanical wind-up hydraulic jack and replaced it with a fully automated system. The package for the Die 2 contains the Die 2 pull-off tester and all accessories required to operate it. The unit includes a single sample pull of disc or dolly, which as you see I bonded one to a piece of concrete here. We have the draw bolt, which is engaged with this dolly and then used to pull it from the surface of the concrete. The rounded edge of this is so that it pulls directly up when testing. Also included is the battery, which I'll show you how to install in a moment. And the top surface of the die 2 offers a screen and an input panel. It's charged through USB, which is included, along with the charger. And I'll now demonstrate how we install the battery. The Die 2 is a splash-proof unit, and it has waterproof seals in all locations. So as I take the battery cover off, we'll see that it has a gasket inside and also that the USB connector on the outside seals into place. So you can see the gasket here. The battery serves both as a power source, it also has the USB connector on it, and this USB connector is used to charge the unit and also to collect data from within the unit. Now, the uh, contact should point up relevant to the unit and then the unit is screwed back together and we can see that rubber sealing USB cover. The unit is solidly constructed. It's a good idea to be aware when you are testing on site that when connected to the concrete and bolted to a dolly there's nothing else holding it up, so if it's on a wall or on the ceiling, you always need to have a solid grip on it, or you can choose to use a mounting kit accessory to hold it safely as well. Turn the unit on, we see the LED screen and the blue touch contacts. I'm going to talk now about the menu and what can be adjusted uh, before a test is taken. Starting at the top left, we have the units option. The play button is used to start a test and the disk icon is used to review saved data. From the bottom on the left, we have the area to adjust the disk size whether that be a diameter for a circular disk or the overall area for a square or oddly shaped disk. And then we have in the middle the load rate options, which allow you to adjust how quickly the force is applied to your test subject. And on the right you can adjust the system clock. So as I step in to the first section, we see the different units we can select. In this case I'm going to choose MPA. Where the units are calculated for pressure, they take into account the diameter of the test disk, which I'm adjusting now. So typically, you'll use a 50 mm test disk, which has the shown area. And finally, I'm going to adjust the load rate, which we can take up or down. And this is how quickly the force is applied per second. We can also enter a maximum load we would like to go up to. We can adjust the clock, both date and time. And this will be recorded with an entry when you save a point of data. And finally in here we can review the previous test. To prepare for pull-off testing, we'll first need to isolate a section of the surface coating the same area as the face of the test disc from the surrounding concrete. We then need to bond the test disc in place and then attach the pull-off tester to the surface. 
In order to do that, we can use a core drill with the same internal diameter as the concrete area to be tested, or this is a ceramic uh, core drill, which would normally have a drill bit in the centre, but we've had to remove that. A good tip for doing a core drill of an area where you don't have a full core drilling jig is to drill a hole in a piece of wood first and press this against the surface, then use that to centre the test drill. So once we've drilled our hole around, we'll have a circular area which should have the exact same diameter as the face of the test disc. So this one's 50 millimetres, so it would need to be 50 millimetre internal diameter. This can be glued in place using an epoxy, which is generally suitable. If you're in a hurry, it is possible to use something like a superglue, but that's only if the coating is non-porous. Otherwise, it'll absorb the superglue and may appear stronger than it actually is. So once we bond our surface, um, we will then need to leave that overnight for epoxy or the superglue you can test in about an hour. And then we can install the bolt into the test disc. And this needs to be engaged with the die too. I've removed the die two head just to show you how that locks into place. So that just slots in there. And if you'll see, there's not much movement in this. We really want to be pulling directly up, but there's just a little bit of give if the surface is slightly uneven. Adjust the legs of the die too to better, better do that. I've bonded my disc in place over my surface coating and I am engaging the draw bolt with the head of the die too. And I'm just going to tighten up the rough adjustment nut until it's finger tight. We don't want to put any force, but we want it firmly in place. And if this was on a wall or ceiling, it should be holding in place with no wiggle room. We're now good to start testing. So I'll go into my test menu and we can see on the right we have the maximum MPA that can be induced, the load rate being applied, the size and the area of our test disc. So I can start the test, two presses of the center button, and the force is beginning to be applied. Along the top, it shows the maximum of the scale, and in the bottom is the numerical value. Now you see we're hovering around 0 0.15, 0 0.14. This is quite a weak surface coating. And you'll usually hear a crack as it breaks. So this is going to keep going a little bit longer until it's confirmed it's seen a maximum uh, strength of that coating. So it's finished. Its maximum was 0.16 MPA, uh, 104.3 seconds to take the test. And uh, we can now remove the die too and take a look at the broken surface. So we see that we've broken completely within the concrete which we can now go ahead and record into the data logging of the die two. So we see the surface coating and the grey concrete underneath. So to do that, we've got the option of A, A slash B and B. This is for a two layer coating, but it's common to consider the glue a third layer. So you can have up to uh, four uh, areas, so A, B and C and it's broken completely in C, which we'd consider the concrete, with A being the glue layer and B being the surface coating. It's actually quite important to, when you're adjusting that, be aware that if it breaks in the glue area, you haven't fully tested the surface. You've applied as much force as the glue will hold, but if that's broken, then there still might be extra capacity in the actual surface coating layer. This is now good to review on the computer. Dialink software can be used to review data collected with the Die2. It can also offer a live view of the force being applied by the Die2. And it's also used to update the Die2 to a newer firmware version. 
when you install it fresh from the CD, it's going to be a slightly older version. So it's good to immediately update Dialink to the latest version. Um, I'll just br briefly step through this, but I won't show you the install wizard because there's not much point. So it's under new, new version available up here at the top. It'll download the new file. And loaded. I'll go ahead and install that and restart the computer and then to come back to my video. So this is now the full version. We see that at the top of the file menu, new version available no longer appears. And we can attach our die to. The green button is one way to do this. There's also an uh, option available under device. The USB port is seen as a virtual serial port. And if you get an error such as this one, it typically means that the die 2 is timed out and turned off. So just turn the device back on and hit retry and it should connect properly this time. And we see our die 2 on the serial port there. The computer will bring up all the recorded tests with the device. And we can see down the bottom the most recent test is the fairly low strength test I showed you previously. So we can see the load graph, which is climbing at a steady rate. We can adjust our units retrospectively. Uh, so set that back to MPA if we want. And we can also add a comment to maybe keep track of where the test was taken or other information if you want to look at this data later. Now that we've connected the die to, to our computer, we can also go ahead and look at a live output from the force sensor. To do that, we hit the black and green graph um, and enter a few parameters. And then we can actually bring up the live graph, which looks like this. So once the test is started, we'll be able to look at the live output from the system. As you can see is the green line at the bottom there. So we see that topped out at a fairly low strength again. We can turn off the live update and then close down the windows. The collected data is able to be exported as a Excel format or as an image. It can also be sent to the printer. So this will be very familiar to you if you've used any of the other ProSec output software such as Hammerlink. We're also able to save the contents of the die to memory to the hard disk, which is good to do before we delete that data, just in case we want to come back to it. Under the device, you have the option to clear the memory. And we've now brought the die to back to uh, sort of back to uh, no content on the memory. final thing we can do with Die2 Link is, along with updating the software to a new version, we can actually update the firmware inside the Die2 to the latest version. So this uses the same update software as uh, all Proce equipment connects to. So we can select any version of firmware. They typically put a few stable previous releases and the most recent. Um, and these are all thoroughly tested before they're pushed out to the devices. So it'll load it into a special mode, clear the memory, and then it'll send the data out to the diner. I I'm speeding these up digitally. So the die 2 has now been updated to the latest version of the software.
Um, it's also possible to change the date and time format, so it uh, suits the Australian formats rather than the American formats. This completes uh, my overview of Die2 and the Dialink software.